Can you assess the depth and the duration of that destruction in case of a return to a national currency? Because if there is no way to make a safe assessment on that, then there is no way to decide as a voter or as a government whether it's worth taking that risk or not. I think you have to say it is highly uncertain. There are no good parallels. The closest ones we have are Argentina, 2001, 2002, which did not, still had its own currency, but it was a very disruptive process of de-dollarizing. Um, that was far more successful, far less disruptive than people think. It's, uh, people imagine that there was a sustained crisis there, and there was not. In fact, the economy had turned up sharply within just two quarters. So the, the Argentine example is relatively favorable. The Greek situation, unfortunately, because of the euro, because there is no Greek currency um, in existence, uh, would be substantially, would be harder. We don't know how much harder. Uh, the trouble is that Greece is faced with the choice between um, a highly uncertain policy, where we know that at the other end, a country with its own currency has many more options than Greece has now, but on the uh, at, at versus a strategy, the strategy that has been followed for the past five years, which we know doesn't work, we know will fail. Now, what we would like, if 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 the if the rest of Europe had any sense of of self-preservation, it would actually say, look, here's a here's a different path, a middle path, which is we will stop demanding ever more austerity, we will keep Greece in the euro, but we will loosen the conditions sufficiently that Greece can begin a recovery. But everything we've seen says that that is not being offered. But in the case of Greece, there, there could be a question as to whether stimulating demand is the right strategy because Greece uh, has a trade deficit, it's a net importer, it doesn't produce enough. So by actually stimulating, raising consumption, you'd be just sending the money back out. But we're mostly talking still about export-led growth. I mean, there will be domestic demand as well. In fact, Argentine case, again, we have, this is as good as a, a, a model as we have. Turns out that the Argentine recovery did include a substantial rise in domestic consumption, but also a rise in exports. Greece, look, um, you have to be careful. Trade deficit uh, is a very bad measure for Greece because service exports, tourism are so important. Still a current account deficit, but not very large. Lots of opportunity. Um, if, if Greece were cheaper, if it were stabilized, no reason to believe that there wouldn't be a lot of opportunity for growth heading forward. And if we say Greece is, you know, has structural problems, well, it always did. That's not, that's, and it didn't always have 25% unemployment. Am I right in saying that uh, you are an advocate of the state uh, having a leading role in recovery rather than uh, the private sector? No, on the contrary. I mean, I would, I would call for an end to state, uh, to ever greater cuts in state investment, but no, I think it would actually be private sector driven. It's, it's important to say I'm not a socialist. I do not believe in government control of the means of production or any of that, and I don't actually, I think there are some things that, that even in Greece the state should be spending money on, but no, the recovery would be about um, a private sector given a chance to recover because it's not being hit over the head again and again with ever harsher austerity. But how do you uh, inspire trust and goodwill in order to uh, attract direct private investment from home and abroad if you continue to have those fiscal problems uh, and an underperforming state? So I'm bringing you back to the issue of reforms. Leaving off the, the, the legacy debt, which is enormous, Greece does not have a serious fiscal problem. Right? It, has a, it has a primary surplus, or it probably does again for a little while. It had one at the end of last year. The, the disruption probably eliminated, but it's probably back in primary surplus. Who has a primary? U.S. doesn't have a primary surplus. Britain doesn't have a primary surplus. But they have access to markets. Well, but that would be, I think, if, if one could, this is why you want debt relief, to put a, to put a line on. So that's the key. Well, no, it's one key. Then uh, a competitive, I mean, a competitive exchange rate if you must leave the euro. Uh, and then Greece is, you know, Greece is a... It is not a, a failed state. Yes, okay, there's plenty of corruption. Everyone tells me that there's lots of corruption. This is, has always been true. It's not unique. Um, is it a place where people could make money on investments? Yes, of course. Uh, there are Wall Street people out there saying Greece is your best investment out there because it does look in many ways undervalued. 
So, uh, and it has assets. I'm sorry to say, you know, it, it sounds de demeaning to talk about tourism, but, but where in the Mediterranean is there this much underdeveloped, wonderful coastline? So if, if one could put a line under this debt uh, crisis, I think a lot could happen. Yes, debt, debt relief is an, a, an end to the ongoing debt crisis is crucial. Where we stand now, we have a new bailout in place. What's your assessment? Is it a good thing? If yes, what's the best way to implement it? A workable strategy has to include two things, uh, at, at least. If it's possible to make this work at all, you have to have, first of all, a, a, a cap on the amount of austerity that's being demanded, not the, ever, not the demand each year that you do even more tightening. Um, and second, you have to have sufficient real debt relief so that one does not have to keep on coming back, some, where it is not a... a uh, a permanent state of debt crisis. The latest memorandum includes neither of these. It still includes demands for ever tight, ever greater austerity. It does not provide fundamental, you know, it provides some reduction in payments, but it still doesn't, it doesn't offer the kind of debt relief that would make the, the outlook looking forward sustainable. So no, I, I think this is almost, it's almost a caricature. This is a, a, an agreement that is designed to fail. Are you saying that a prolongation of uh, repayments, a grace period, uh, lower interest rates, these do not constitute enough debt restructuring? It's not enough. And I, you, would, I, you would want a haircut, basically. I would want a haircut, if only because it's... Uh, I mean, I think there's, there are, in a real sense, that does provide more debt relief, and it's also psychologically very important. Uh, I, I come from... I've studied Latin... American crises, you know, there are many lessons in history, and one of the things we learned in the 1980s was that a haircut that is acknowledged, that is clearly, that looks like it's the end of the process, has an enormous positive effect on the whole situation. But many would say that uh, a haircut uh, in a public debt would be a political impossibility. It would be like calling on a Dutch pensioner to pay for my national debt, and that would definitely undermine European solidarity. Well, but of course, the, what the, the truth is that money is never going to come. The, the reality is that Greece says, Greece's paper debts are impossible to, to collect. No, no country can do the kind of fiscal adjustment that's being demanded of Greece. So it, real, realistically, there is no loss for the Dutch or the German taxpayer in all of this. Um, now, if you can, if it's if it's still is there a loss anyway, you're saying? Yes, right. And, uh, and much of it has already in a, been been capitalized. Now, if if you're saying that politically it's impossible to acknowledge reality, then Greece must exit the euro, because if there's no way within the euro system to get a a, a plan that has any chance of success, this is this is a dead end. Okay. And now this brings us back to the national currency debate. You said that it's very difficult to assess the depth and the duration of the impact that a Grexit would have. So let me now ask you, if you were a responsible Greek politician, would you go ahead and make the decision to um, take the country to a national currency? What I would have done is in the days after the no vote, I would not have done Grexit, but I would have introduced the parallel currency. I would have gone for the plan B that was in fact had been, been worked out with, with uh, essentially debit card payments as a simply to keep liquidity flowing to, take, to make it possible to operate the Greek system without having to rely at every step on the, on the European Central Bank. So the Var Varoufakis, James right. Galbraith plan. I would have gone that way. And that would not necessarily have led to Grexit. I mean, that might have opened the possibility for further discussion and then a deal with the creditors that was realistic. And then perhaps Greece could have stayed in. But if not, if they were still intransigent, then I would have gone for Brexit. In the full knowledge that it would be dangerous and disruptive, but the path that's currently being followed is, is, is guaranteed to fail. This is not going to work. Is it worrying you that the uh, national currency debate is mainly advocated in this country by the far left? You don't belong there. Right. I'm not, I'm not there, and that, that is a tragedy. Uh, I understand, actually, how that happens. I think the power of conventional wisdom is enormous. 
been very, very rare for uh, uh, the, the public never supports a weaker currency, even, even when it should. Um, and, but this, is, this has been destroying the center left all across Europe. Uh, the, what you have is that the, the reasonable, the moderate left, um, has been intimidated by the bankers. And so you're left with only the crazy people uh, who I find horrible on other grounds, but they are the only ones willing to actually come out for what is, um, what may well be the necessary economic policy. I, I, I hate that. But this so is Jeremy Corbyn. Well, Corbyn, yes. Corbyn is certainly not sinister the way the, the drachma people are in Greece. But he's, he's flaky, no question. What do you think Tsipras stands now? Uh, before the referendum, you advocated a no vote, uh, just like Tsipras, uh, but with a different rationale, and Tsipras took a different path. Where do you think he stands now? I, don't, I guess I don't know what, what he is for now. If, if he is for uh, uh, accepting the dictates of the Troika, are we allowed to go back to calling him the Troika? But if he's for accepting the dictates of the Troika, uh, how is he different from the other parties? 